Today, we are talking about how to learn through literature. Sunlight's been teaching kids for over 30 years this way, and we're excited to tell you all about it. There are so many benefits to homeschooling with great books, but let's start with some introductions. Judy, would you like to go first? Sure. Hey, Sunny. My name is Judy. I am a veteran homeschool mom and also the marketing sales manager for Sunlight. Uh, we use Sunlight um, all the way from kindergarten through graduation and totally enjoyed learning through literature. And Christy, what about you? Hi, I'm Christy. Thanks for having me today. And I am uh, the mom of four boys and we have learned and enjoyed learning with Sunlight from preschool through high school, um, through graduation also. So um, and this is our, we're starting our 14th year of homeschooling in the fall. Nice. Well, thank you both for being here. My name is Sunny. I'm Sunlight's community manager, and I'm also a Sunlight mom. I have a daughter and a son who have both been educated entirely with Sunlight. So let's go ahead and dive in for people that are unfamiliar with Sunlight or literature-based curriculum. What is literature-based learning and how do we do that here at Sunlight? Well, in its simplest form, learning from literature means that as opposed to using textbooks, for subjects like history and Bible and science and literature, um, you use award-winning literature. So biographies and historical fiction and just great stories that take all of that knowledge and information and wrap it inside of a story. And it gives it context and um, it really appeals to a child's imagination. It generates emotion. Um, and let's face it, it's a whole lot more interesting to learn from a good story than it is from a textbook. <laughs> yeah, I would say in one word, it's fun. It's um, digging into learning. And um, when we read literature, we, it's memorable. It's something that, um, you know, that memory of what you're reading, whenever the way that I learned, I memorized things and um, you know, new things for a test, did fairly well, and then forgot all about it. <laughs> and so um, with Sunlight, my boys, um, instead of um, my students who used to say, why do we have to do this? Um, my boys, when we would read about someone, they would say, oh, we know him because he was in this book. I didn't know he was a real person. And so we just were able to build on that and go from there, just from a different angle that was more fun. Yeah, I love that. You guys mentioned that it's fun and you retain the information better. Um, I know that's something that has always appealed to me about sunlight. And I'm amazed at how much I learned that I didn't learn, you know, first time around when I was going through school, because it is so much fun and you get those biographies and learn about real people. So absolutely, um, that is one of its perks, I think. But what makes sunlight unique to other literature-based curriculums? We're one of the first, but now there's several literature-based curriculums. So what are some of the special features of sunlight that still make it so great? Well, I think it is good to point out that we're the original literature-based curriculum. And so I think um, we're trailblazers. We've kind of um, set the model and established, you know, what it looks like to educate with literature, um, with a literature-based approach. Um, I think one of the things that makes us unique from some other literature-based programs is that when we um, sell a program, we are, we are providing not only the teacher's guide and all the wonderful things that that has inside of it, but we've also included all of the literature. Um, you don't have to go to the library. You don't have to kind of dig around through secondhand um, bookstores. Um, everything that you need is included in our package. Mm -hmm. That was important to me as a busy mom <laughs> to have what I needed so that I was ready to go and so that my time could be spent um, not reinventing the wheel, but um, learning with my, my kiddos. And um, I think Sunlight has decades of serving families. And so there have been continued improvements, even over the course of the 14 years that I've been doing Sunlight. They really do listen to parents. So give feedback as you go and, they, and you will see that they do listen. Um, they have enough people saying uh, the same thing, they, then they will make changes that 
um, are really beneficial to not just you, but to other people coming behind you. And so um, I've appreciated that each time I've gotten to something where I feel like, oh, next year they really do need a little more of whatever it is. The very next year um, in my IG, I've even talking to, talked to an advisor before and they've said, have you looked at next year's, look at the three week sample and I would open it up and I would be amazed because it was exactly what I was asking for. So they anticipated needs that I saw coming as a mom. So the continued improvements and just the anticipation of what's next as the student develops is phenomenal. Yeah, and you both mentioned the instructor's guide or the IG as we call it. And that for me was the number one draw about Sunlight was that I did not have to plan a thing. I could just order my package. All the books were included. The instructor's guide was there and it taught me how to teach because that was something that I wasn't sure about. I did not come from a teaching background and really wondered, you know, if I'm just reading stories, how am I actually going to homeschool this child? So let's talk a little bit about that. You know, how do you know your child's learning and how do you know if literature is enough? Because a lot of times, especially with young children, it doesn't really feel like school. So so how, how do you know that they're learning and that literature is enough to teach them? I think um, the uh, as far as um, thinking that, uh, well, well, I'll just say my youngest son told me at one point, or my third born, he told me at one point um, that he did not know when he was little that uh, what we were doing was school and that for years he didn't understand <laughs> that the books we were reading he didn't know that was school he didn't know that the writing he did once a week the um, you know dictating to me and I typed up what he said um, he didn't understand that he just thought everyone was at their house doing this he didn't know because he was homeschooled all the way through and he never had been to a school so for him school meant math so I do think that there is that take where um, you know, the, so much of what you're doing is learning and, um, and it, it doesn't even seem like school, at least to, to Connor, it did not. So um, I do think that that's huge. But I would say that seeing my son go away to um, college this fall, and he's in an honors program. And guess what they're doing? They're doing literature based learning, and they're doing projects, you know, where they come in and do projects, and they're doing conversation in class. And I got to sit in um, on parent weekend in his class and hear one of my former professors um, talking to the class. And I was amazed by all the, the sharp students in the class. And what were they doing? They were reading literature and they were discussing it. And it's exactly what we did with Sunlight. And so it, he was very much prepared and it was enough. And you do, you're spending time every day talking to them. And so the test testing that might be necessary or might be the way, the only way to find out if these, you know, 30 kids in your class <laughs> are retaining material is not as necessary. And so there, um, there are some things um, I think of in the high school level, one of my favorite things were the decade summaries that we did. Um, that was um, where my son wrote a decade summary for each decade. There are different, um, you know, assignments that are helpful, but, you know, it really is the discussion that you do. Um, it is enough, I would say. I, I don't think there's anything I can add to that. You know what your kids know because you're the one that's reading and you're having the conversation. Yeah, that is great. And then tell me kind of the difference between like our couch and table subjects. Christy, you mentioned math. I mean, we still offer math through sunlight and some of those more skill-based subjects. So, you know, how do, how do you kind of differentiate between those two, you know, table learning and couch learning and, and make sure that your child is getting a well-rounded education? Hmm. Well, that's, I think that's a very, um, uh, I, I learn things best by being able to picture them in my mind. And so the fact that we talk about table subjects or couch subjects helps me make the distinction very easily. And it simply means Table subjects are those things that you would imagine your child doing sitting at a table. So they're, they're skill-based subjects. They're graded subjects like math and spelling and handwriting. 
Um, but the couch-based subjects are those subjects that you would imagine all sitting together, uh, curled up on the couch and, and sharing your history and your Bible and your science reading and any reading that you're going to do out loud. And so it, it's nice to be able to see that distinction between the two types of subjects and sunlight carries them both. Mm -hmm. And so sunlight clearly is very appealing to kids that like to read or parents that like to read, right? Families that already really enjoy reading together. But is it a curriculum that could be used with kids that don't enjoy reading? Or what about if you as the parent don't really enjoy reading? You know, can you still use it? How can you modify it or maybe make it easier for you if you really want to incorporate literature and have that love of reading in your home, but it's not your natural favorite thing to do? Well, it was not my favorite thing to do as a child to learn from a textbook, but it was all there was. And so I adapted and I did learn from textbooks. Um, I think that we believe, and I know that we believe that learning through the basis of literature is an excellent way to learn. It has been for many, many years. Um, you can look back hundreds of years and think of famous people who learned that way. Um, so I'm not sure that liking to read or loving to read is a prerequisite for using a literature-based program. I think what does happen is much what Christy described. I think, number one, you realize that your kids aren't really thinking that this is tough or school or hard. And so because that approach to learning is so appealing, um, you know, I, I think it's just an excellent way to go. I think the other thing that we sometimes find happens is when children who don't um, say they are lovers of reading begin to learn that way and they are read to every day and they are reading every day, I think a, a love for reading begins to develop over time. And even if they don't turn into voracious readers, you know, give me more, give me more, um, I think they still learn to appreciate good literature. One of my children uh, learned to read at a later age, um, never turned into what I would call a book lover, but I was in his home not long ago and he was telling me about a, a good book that he was reading and enjoying. And so I think they learn to appreciate good literature even if it's not something that they love to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a mom, you can, you know, your children. So, you know, the topics sometimes, um, with my boys, um, you know, everyone loves something. <laughs> and so you sometimes do like a live, you know, maybe get help from a librarian. If you, if you, you know, librarians are great with suggestions of, of books, but with sunlight, there's such a variety of books that, over time, everyone falls in love with a book somewhere, <laughs> you know, it just, it does happen that way with my boys. And I would say my most re reluctant reader had some things going against him. When we started out, he had some medical things that happened that were life-threatening and he had to regain language. So he was certainly starting out from a disadvantage as far as vocabulary, as far as attention span. And being able to being able to listen without just frustration, and we were able to start where he was um, and build up. And so, um, in, with sunlight, we were able to customize. And we started out at in the developmental subjects, um, math and reading. He was on target with those, and so we were at grade level in those um, subjects. But in um, reading aloud, that was a skill that he needed to build. And, and that was really great for him to be able to build. And so we started lower than his grade level and were able to, um, over time, he fit the age range that Sunlight says, um, you, know, you know, the recommended age range. So don't be afraid if you need to start out at a different level um, with a student that has a need um, a real need to not have so many words coming at them. His favorite book in kindergarten was called Rosie's Walk and he would read it and laugh. He thought it was great. It was about a little fox and it has zero words. It was a picture book with no words and it was his favorite. And um, so we started with the preschool level, even though he was in first grade of read alouds 
first grade math, first grade, um, you know, other subjects that were developmental and uh, reading. And, um, and then uh, science, we were able to do with his older brother, which made me feel better because he was doing the lower level with the read alouds. And um, so, but science had all the pictures and what was really engaging. And so we used that really as part of our language arts development. He learned to write sentences with our language arts, I mean, with our science activity sheets. So it's so customizable and there are so many um, great things, but I would say that he definitely was not um, my first eager reader at all. He was very reluctant to have any words coming at him, and he moved from that to, I think it was probably our third or fourth year of sunlight that I was reading a book aloud to them, and you guys have probably heard this story before. <laughs> um, he, um, in the middle of the night got up after he waited till everyone went to sleep and he went and got the book off the shelf and finished it because he couldn't wait to see what was going to happen in the book so he went from this non-eager reader to eventually i don't even know what the book was but some book got his attention and he was dying to know what was going to happen and he had to have the next chapter before the next day and so um i've seen that happen and even in, in the um, middle school years, another student that loves to read everything literature was reluctant about science. And this year, I think through doing the history of science, he has learned that science is not evil and the most boring thing ever. <laughs> and he's finally relented and decided, oh, wow, this, and, and I hear him getting engaged and excited about it. And that is, that is um, amazing for me to watch um, that over time, even though they might not be eager in a subject to learn um, through reading that you eventually bump into those things that are interesting and it lights a fire and then it's on from there, you know? <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I love what you both said too about your kids are all different. I think sometimes you assume, okay, it's going to work great with this kid, but I don't know if it's going to work with this kid. I know my children are both very different that way as well. I have one who loves to read and just, you can't give her enough books. And then my son is much more hands-on and creative. And so it took him a little while to kind of learn, okay, you're gonna sit here and listen to this story. Or, you know, we try to incorporate more hands-on with him, you know, to go along with his books because otherwise he'll tune me out and, you know, he's not listening. So, um, but you both mentioned that, yeah, you can start sunlight at whatever level that child is at and find the things that they are most interested in. And eventually, you know, you'll see those light bulbs going off. Um, I think that's one of the benefits to literature-based curriculum is that you can use it with a wide age range. But let's talk about some of those benefits. You know, what are the benefits to using a literature-based curriculum and how do you see kids grow by using that type of curriculum? I think one of the things that um, has always struck me is the flexibility of a literature-based program. <clears throat> um, unlike learning from a textbook, you're not tied to a schedule that requires you to make this much progress every day, or you get behind and you don't finish the book. Um, with literature-based learning, there is an inherent um, overlap built in. So for example, if you're studying early American history, you're not going to read just one book about George Washington, you might read two or three. And so, especially with kids who have learning challenges or are not able to, um, keep up with the volume of literature that is scheduled, much as Christy was describing, um, you have the freedom to drop out one of those books. Um, you might need to drop out a book about George Washington, but it doesn't mean that you're gonna end up having this George Washington shaped hole in your child's education because you're going to meet him in other places. And if you continue with Sunlight, you're gonna get American history at least two more times. And so, um, that, I think, for me, is probably the most impressive benefit to literature-based learning is the flexibility, that it is customizable, and your family's unique, um, just like mine is, and every homeschool family is unique. So I can take that and mold it and form it to what works best for my, my kids. Yes. Absolutely. And with um, four students, I've been able to reuse sunlight um, from uh, year to year. It's amazing when uh, you're getting ready for the year and you are looking at your plans and you realize, oh, 
this will work out for, you know, these students and I don't have to buy it. I already have it. And you pull it out and you use it again and then you use it again. And uh, some of my, one of my boys read some of his books five, six times. I mean, just over and over and over. I have a son who loves uh, Christmas Carol and he reads it every year at Christmas. And so once a year he reads the Christmas Carol. <laughs> so he's, some of these books get read again and again and again. So um, the, the reuse of it. And then also I've been able to find um, times where I can combine my students. And so that um, if you're watching a movie, you don't have a movie for each of your kids, you know, on their level, you know, you watch a movie together. And as in the same way with literature-based learning, you can um, do your developmental table time subjects at the just right level. And then um, the literature-based learning you can do together. And that makes it fun. You can have, um, you know, conversation that everyone's included in because they have, oh, I read about that in the book. You know, if we're talking about a topic, uh, one from one of our read alouds, you know, they've read on their own and they can, um, you know, kind of fill you in on what their thinking was about, um, you know, as they read about some character from history. And so it brings everybody into the learning. And, um, and so you have your time together and then, you know, the reading that they do on their own and it makes it just, it makes a robust discussion. And um, yeah, it's um, combining I've even this year realized that just this in the past, I would say couple of weeks, I realized I was gonna be able to combine my oldest or my middle two guys into psychology, um, our psychology program, one of our electives for high school. And um, so combining, whether you're talking about the literature or some of the other um, subjects, um, it saves time and, um, and I like being able, um, if I have pulled to a part to, to meet a goal of whatever I'm working on, then to be able to bring them back together later, I love that. It, it, um, there's something special about working together. My youngest and my uh, next to youngest this year have, have done um, something together. And I, I felt like my older guy was left out, you know, a little bit. I wasn't, um, he was doing some more independent work as a high schooler. And this year, um, next year, it's his senior year, and we're going to do psychology together. So um, there's all different ways that you can combine and make, um, you know, the just use the flexibility of sunlight. Yeah, I love those family discussions that you mentioned. My kids have a nice big five-year age gap, so they've never been able to do a program together, but it's fun to watch as I'm rereading books to my son. My daughter will be kind of in the other room, you know, oh, I forgot about that part. Or, oh, this is my favorite book from that year. And so she gets involved in the conversations, you know, again, and gets to revisit some of her favorites. Plus, it's really fun to see their different personalities. You know, what was a book maybe she didn't love? My son is loving, you know, way more depending on who the characters are, the type of story. Um, and then also my husband, was, he started working remotely about a year ago. And so now he's getting to listen in. And it's been really fun to hear him, you know, because he missed out the first time when my daughter went through. But now, now that he's here for all of us to know these characters or know this event inside and out, you know, because we're hearing it in this historical fiction novel as opposed to a textbook. It just makes it so fun as a family. We feel like we're all learning together, which is great. Um, so what has been your favorite thing about using sunlight while homeschooling your own kids? I think one of my favorite memories um, when I was still homeschooling my kids, the year that my oldest uh, moved into the high school levels where there are no more read-alouds, and her younger siblings um, were still learning together and reading together with me. She came to me at one point and said, I don't think I like growing up. And I said, well, why would you say that? And she said, because it means that you're not reading out loud to me anymore. And it, it was a very simple thing, but it struck me that that had become a very important part of my children's daily experience. And they actually liked it when I read to them. And so as a homeschool mom, you know, there are so many times when you doubt that I choose the right thing, or am I doing the right thing with um, this subject over here? And so 
those times when you hear comments like that directly from your children, I think it sticks in your brain. And I think that was one of my most favorite memories. Yeah. And I don't know if you as a mom ever feel like this, but I know um, uh, just the volume of things that you need to cover as a mom, <laughs> you know, the, the sheer number of things that you Sometimes I would think about things that um, I wanted to, that I want to talk to my kids about, that I want to, to, for us to have a conversation about. And there, it's just, you can't do that. You can't cover everything you want to cover. It's just, um, and there's so much out there that you want to talk about them before, you, you know, they head off for college. And um, especially before my son was leaving for college, I kind of felt that way that last year before he left, like, oh, have we covered that? <gasps> does he know what, you know, like I would ask him questions and he would say, oh, I'd never, I'd never think about that. And he'd kind of laugh because he knew I was kind of going through that checklist of what have I not told you? And um, anyway, but I think covering topics that we would never, you know, that wouldn't have normally come up in a conversation um, just through our reading through the years, um, that has been the things that I really, as a mom, want to talk to, to my children about there have been so many subjects, so many topics, and you get to talk about them, not in um, the context of your own kids, but characters. So you, so it's, so it's non-threatening, you know, you're covering maybe a character topic or things that happen to people, the way people treat others, those type of things that you get to talk about and you cover it from a safe distance of re talking about literature. Um, but you get to really cover some really important things as a mom with your kids. I think that's been my favorite thing. Yeah, for me, it's been the relationships as well. Um, now that my oldest is in middle school and I, you know, you always think about teenagers and relationships and kids don't want to be with their parents and all of that. But we, because we're together all the time, get to have those conversations, you know, woven throughout the day. And, mm -hmm. and I get to see kind of little glimpses of who she's becoming and who she will be as an adult, which has just been super fun. And Christy, like you said, because of the Great Sunlight books, we're touching on very challenging subjects and things that I want her to know as an adult, but it's in a safe place. It's at home. It's, you know, us talking together and it, she's not being exposed to things, you know, in a jarring way, like she might be, you know, out in the world somewhere. So I know for me, that has, has been my favorite thing so far. And I think when I look back on my sunlight journey, the relationship is the part that, that will stand out the most. And ladies, thank you so much for being here and explaining a little bit more about sunlight and why we think it's so great. Thank you. Thanks.